Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service today. Good morning. Third time's a charm. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our service today as we celebrate the fourth Sunday in Easter, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Today as we study God's word together, we focus on the fact that Jesus is indeed our good shepherd, the one who watches out for us, the one who provides for us, the one who cares for us, and the one who indeed was willing to lay down his life for us that we might have salvation. Today we begin our service with the singing of the first hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today, alleluia, we worship our risen king. stand. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking forgiveness and amendment of our ways. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Almighty God, we confess that we are by nature sinful. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We repent and are truly sorry for our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus, our good shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, come to dwell in your house forever. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. As a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he keep you steadfast in the Holy Spirit, lead you to greater faith and obedience, and bring you to live with him forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The works of the Lord are great and glorious. His name is worthy of praise. We join in singing verse 4 of our opening hymn.
us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with, the, with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, beginning with the first verse. This lesson, the Apostle Peter appeals to those who serve as pastors, those who serve as overseers of the flock. His encouragement is to be watchful for them, because the, de the devil is constantly looking for a way to devour God's people and his flock, and he calls on those pastors to be those overseers to, to sound the warning and to protect the sheep. To the elders among you I appeal as a fellow elder and witness of Christ's suffering, who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to turn your attention to the questions that follow the lesson. How does a pastor, which means shepherd, serve as a shepherd of God's flock? Go ahead, Mrs. Rosemont. Well, just like the shepherd would take the sheep to pastures to feed them and to streams of water to give them something to drink, pastors will um, lead us to God's word where we, our souls are fed. And just as shepherds would watch out for any evils that might beset their sheep, the pastor is responsible to look out for dangers that might afflict our faith with false teachings or other things that might creep into the word. Yeah, you think of the, the way that a shepherd watches over the sheep, provides for them, leads them to pasture to feed them, and then also protects against the wild animals. A shepherd of a congregation feeds his sheep, feeds God's, God's sheep by providing the word of God so that there can be that rich feast of, of his word and also watching over them when false teaching comes along to, to help them stand up against that. Uh, describe the attitude God wants his shepherds to have. Dr. Myers? One of love and willingness. Okay, love and willingness. There's a humility there. It says not lording it over them, but rather the sheep that are entrusted to a pastor's care are dear to them because uh, these are the souls that God has entrusted to him. And finally, explain why it is so important for pastors to prove faithful in their callings by the chief shepherd. Cheryl? Because um, we look to our pastors for guidance, and if they are not faithful to their calling, they can mislead a whole church. We see it all the time today. Okay, yeah, you see a, a pastor Pastor has been given that call to lead his, his congregation, and it would be easy for them to lead into false teaching and... and to prove faithful that they want when when Jesus appears again to say, I've been a good and faithful servant, sharing the word of God faithfully. I invite you now to join in the verse of the day, John 10, verse 14, as you have it printed on page 6. for today comes from the Good Shepherd chapter of the Bible, John chapter 10, beginning with the 11th verse. This lesson we see Jesus announce himself as the Good Shepherd, the one who was willing to lay down his life for the sheep, the one who cares for the sheep, and the one who calls his sheep with his voice, and the sheep know him. I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, 
he abandons the sheep and run, runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice, and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my Father. This is the gospel of our Lord. What difference do you see between the good shepherd and the hired hand? Dr. Myers? Well, the good shepherd takes ownership. The hired hand is just there to make money. Okay. The, the good shepherd takes ownership of the sheep. Hired hand, he's just there to make a buck. He's... And he's not quite willing, not quite as invested when the, when the wolf comes to, uh, to stand up to that. Identify who the other sheep that are not of the sheep pen are. Sure. I would say it's probably us as Gentiles. Okay. So, there's, so you certainly have uh, the Jew-Gentile kind of aspect there. And the other is the unbelievers that are need to be called and to end belief. Okay. So there are still those people who are not yet believers and... Those, those people still need to be called to faith. And so God uses his good shepherd and his under shepherds to, to call those people to faith. And finally, how do you know that the good shepherd truly loves you? We, we, we have such a beautiful picture there. Pete. He laid down his life for us. Yeah, you, you, you can think of no greater love than to lay down your life for someone else. And the good shepherd says, I did that willingly. And if you continue on there, notice he said, I did it not because I had to, but of my own accord, and I had the authority to take it up again. So not only is his death so important for us, but also his resurrection. We now continue with confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please stand. We join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the first three verses of The Lord's My Shepherd. You may be seated.
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The word of God for our consideration this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 20, beginning with the 28th verse. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. This is the word of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, you could probably argue that the most important job in the United States is probably the President of the United States. Maybe you could even argue that that might even be one of the most important jobs in all the world. I mean, after all, this is the Commander-in-Chief of our mighty armed forces. This is the one who is charged with not only leading our nation, but is also called the leader of the free world. This is the one who can make off co offhand comments and cause the stock market to rise and fall by hundreds of points. Pretty powerful position. But you know, there's probably a number of people that are just as important. You see them all the time but maybe you don't quite notice them. Whenever you see the president speak, they're there, quietly, faithfully, meticulously, silently doing their responsibilities. It's the United States Secret Service. It's those men who are, and women who are charged with protecting the president. It's a job that they've had since 1901, since President William McKinley was assassinated. They've taken up full-time responsibility for this. And I suppose you could say, well, yes, he's the leader of the free world, but they're the ones who's entrusted with his life. So now ask yourself the question, what happens if the Secret Service doesn't do its job? Well, assassination plots could find success. A number of years ago, the president was going to make a visit to the Netherlands. The way it works is the Secret Service will send an advance team ahead to that country to make sure that everything is secure. Well, the night before the president was supposed to arrive, some members of the Secret Service who were charged with his protection decided to go out for a long, heavy night of drinking. Well, what happens when those who are charged with the safety and security and being watchful are not. Well, those who were responsible, were disciplined, were sent home for that lapse of security. Now, I don't know that anybody here is on the Secret Service. It's secret, so maybe I don't know. But you have still been charged with watching and protecting. It's not just pastors that we hear about in our lesson today or in any of our lessons, but really it's an address to all Christians that we are really called to be his under shepherds. Now some have public ministry responsibilities like pastors or teachers, but we all certainly have personal ministries. And so today as we study God's word, we see Paul give us an encouragement. He says, shepherds, Keep watch. Now, the Apostle Paul had been on his third missionary journey. He was making his way down the western coast of Turkey, making his way back to Jerusalem. His hope was that he would be there by Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. But as he was making his way south, he wanted to stop in the city of Ephesus, or at least he wanted to talk to the shepherds, the overseers, the elders, the pastors that were there. But you know how it is, don't you? You have those family and friends, 
Those people that are near and dear to you, and these people were near and dear to Paul. He had spent three years with them. You say, it's just going to be a real quick visit. I'm just going to stop in for a few minutes, and honestly, we'll be getting going. Well, Paul was no different. He knew that if he stopped in Ephesus, there was no way he was going to make it back to Jerusalem in time. And so he invites these pastors from the Ephesian congregations to come and visit with him 30 miles south in a place called Miletus. And there he can give them some final instructions, and there he can finally say goodbye. Listen to what he says. Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock, of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. This watching that he encourages them to do is not the getting intoxicated kind and that kind of watching. No, he wants them to be very focused and very watchful, very active in their watching over the people that have been entrusted to their care. Because if they are not watching, how are the people going to to be guarded against? How are they going to be protected? But he says, first of all, watch over yourselves. If you've ever been on an airplane, you know how it works. The flight attendants not only do their pre-flight check and show you where the exits are, but they always say, if the cabin would lose pressure, oxygen masks will fall from the ceiling that you can put on your face and you can cinch them tight. And then the most important instruction comes. First, attend to your own mask before you attend to that of your children or those who need assistance. Why is that? Well, the flight attendants and the airlines know that you're not going to be a whole lot of good if you don't get oxygen and are passed out. You're not going to be helping any of the children or anybody else who needs assistance. And so Paul tells these shepherds, of these congregations. Watch out. Attend to your own spiritual mask first. Because if you are not watching out for yourself, how are you supposed to be of help to anybody else? If you are not taking care of your own spiritual needs and your own spiritual well-being, how are you supposed to be of an assistance to anybody else? Because when our familiarity with God's word, when our association with it becomes lax, that's when we open ourselves up for false teaching. And don't you think that Satan is well aware when we aren't spending time in God's word that we are open for an assassination of our faith? And so Paul tells these pastors, watch out for yourself, because if you're not, how are you going to be in a position to watch out for anyone else? I've seen it a few times in my life. Loved ones taking care of their loved ones when tragedy happens, when an accident happens, when health begins to fail. And it's a joy to see, isn't it? You see those loved ones step in, step out in their faith, showing their, their servant attitude to take care of someone who is not feeling well, someone who can't take care of themselves. But there's always needing an encouragement there. Because even though these people had made that promise, I promise to love you in sickness and in health, there's a warning and a, an encouragement that needs to be said. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. Because what happens in that effort to care for that loved one? Meals are skipped. Exercise is forgotten. Sleep is deprived. And then what happens to the health of the individual who is supposed to be healthy and helping somebody else, their health struggles. And when their health struggles and when they are down, how are they supposed to be of help to someone else? Well, what about when it comes to our spiritual lives? You know, think about it for parents. Parents, we, we want to make sure our children are in church. We want to make sure that they hear their devotions, that they know their memory work. We want to make sure that they know who their Savior is. But are you taking time for your own devotional life? How are you supposed to feed your children entrusted to your care when you yourself are not being fed? Or think about pastors. 
How is a pastor supposed to feed his congregation and care for his congregation if he's not first preaching to himself and applying God's word to himself and convicting himself and be assured by the gospel? We can't fill other people up with something that we don't have if we continue to empty ourselves of it. And if we neglect God's word, again, Satan knows it. Satan knows that we aren't always faithful, and he tries to capitalize on it. When we aren't making use of God's word, that's when the wolves begin to encircle around us. Or, you know, you think of something like online worship. Over the past months, you think of what a blessing that has been, right? When you have been stuck at your home, when, when people who are a little bit more concerned for their health stay away, you think this is such a great thing, a, a great utility at our disposal. Because God's word can continue to feed those people. But what happens when we decide, you know what, I know I'm able to go to church, I know I can go to church, I know I'm healthy enough to go to church, I know that I'm not scared to go to church, but it's more convenient to just stay home. I know God says, let's not give up meeting together. But what if I want my will over his? Again, the wolves begin to encroach something that is meant to be a good thing and we can turn it into something that's not. Or you think of how we gather together as a congregation and say, what is the best way we can get the word of God out to our neighbors? And it's a good thing to consider that question. But the moment we say that the most important thing is not the word of God, we have issues. The moment we say it's the format or the worship style or the personality or the presentation or the programs, the moment we put anything else ahead of God's word, again, the wolves are closing in. Because Satan would love for us to replace God's word with anything else. Because he knows the fact that faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word of Christ. And if he can see that opening, if he can see us replacing that word with something else, that gives him great satisfaction. So Paul says to the elders, the overseers, he says to you, watch out for yourselves. But you know, there's something that we can't miss in this lesson. You are so precious to Jesus. You are so precious to the Good Shepherd. How do you know? Well, he laid down his life for you. For every time that we neglect God's word, for every time that we try to put something else and replace it with something else more important, for every time we neglect to look out for our own spiritual well-being, that's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why he bled as your good shepherd to lay down his life for you so that the sins that could be counted against us, the binder of sins that would convict us, don't. Because Jesus laid down his life for you and for me. And now he says, continue to watch out for yourself because you are empowered to watch out for yourself because of what I've done for you. But it's not just for you. Now he says, watch out over God's flock. Now that we are attentive to ourselves, now that we know that God wants us to do this for ourselves, listen to what he says. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Savage wolves look to devour the flock. And why is that? It's because your Christian worldview doesn't agree with the secular worldview. It's because you putting Jesus as the first and foremost in your life is offensive to the world. It's because you look at the things that God says in his word and hold those as sacred, whether it comes to marriage or life, whether it comes to morality, and you hold those things sacred and the world looks at it and says, no, we want something different. And for that reason... They look at you and put a target on your back and say, this is a meal in waiting. 
You see, Paul knew that savage wolves would come from without, but he said, watch out for those who come from within. Recently, I read a story about a man by the name of Abraham Piper. You might not know him, but maybe you are familiar with his father. His father's name is John Piper. He's a well-known evangelical pastor, theologian. He's kind of ranked up there as one of the most one of the most prominent pastors in America. Well, his son Abraham left the church, has been excommunicated, and now he has taken to TikTok to give his musings as what he calls an ex-evangelical. What he does is goes after the church, criticizes the church and its teaching, and tries to appeal to those who have also left their evangelical upbringing. Well, what kind of damage does that do when someone from within the church then leaves and takes aim at the church? They can take others with. What damage does it do when people from within the church begin to distort the word of God and change the word of God? You see, it, we mentioned before in one of our lessons, think of the damage that is done when a pastor gets up in front of a congregation, be it tens or hundreds or thousands, and he's unfaithful to that word. He has a powerful platform, and he has an audience that is there, and for 20 minutes or so, he goes unchecked and can distort the word of God. And people trust him because he's their pastor, right? But Paul says, watch out. Watch out for yourselves. Watch out for the flock because those savage wolves are all around. Those savage wolves are looking to destroy the church. And you know, these attacks, they don't have to be overtly hostile. They can start out rather subtle, but then become more aggressive. And so when you think of false teaching, you ask yourself, how much false teaching is too much? Well, put it to yourself this way. How much gangrene is, a, is too much for you to have in your body? Just a little is enough to spread. Just a little is enough to kill you. And so when it comes to false teaching, we don't want to tolerate even the tiniest bit. We want to remain faithful to the Word of God so that we not only feed ourselves but can continue to feed others who are entrusted to our care. We want our pastor to be in the Word and faithful to the Word and proclaim that Word faithfully as, a, as an under-shepherd. We want to continue to feed our own faith so that it's not distorted, so that we can hear that Word that a shepherd preaches and compare it to what God says and what we know and see that he proves faithful. We've been given such a tremendous responsibility. It's not just put on the pastors to take care of the flock that is a congregation, but it's put on all of us as his under-shepherds because each one of us has a ministry, a personal ministry, a private ministry that we can feed those who are in our circle, that we can watch out for those who are being tempted to stray from the flock, that we can sound the alarm and call them back so that they can feed on the pure word of God. But you know, if it was left to us, we would be a meal in a heartbeat for the wolves. But we're not alone. Listen to how Paul ends our lesson for today. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. The good shepherd not only bought the flock with his blood, but he keeps the flock through his word. He keeps the flock with that promise of eternity because the good shepherd took up his life again. He's com committed to us, to his grace. He's given us his word, and he's given us that encouragement. Keep watch, shepherds, over yourselves and the flock. You're not alone. Your good shepherd is with you. Amen. Now the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I invite you now to join in the response hymn with the last two verses of our hymn, The Lord's My Shepherd.
Just a reminder that we have our offering plate up at the entrance table. If you have an offering today, you can uh, put it in there when you leave. Otherwise, please make use of our online giving platforms of Tithely or Bill Pay. Please rise for prayer. Lord Jesus, Good Shepherd, we have heard the sweet sound of your familiar and loving voice in the gospel and have feasted in the green pastures of your holy word. Bless your word in our lives. Use its message to nourish and sustain us as we journey through this life to the next. What joy it is to know that you lay down your life for the sheep, even sheep like us. Gracious Shepherd, we are truly confused and foolish without you. Forgive us the times we wander from you and stray from the call of your voice. Restore us to your fold and protect us from the evil one. When Satan comes in sheep's clothing of false teaching, expose his lies and guide us in your truth. When temporary pleasures beckon us to follow the wide road to hell, use your rod and your staff to curb our sinful nature and lead us in paths of righteousness. Guiding shepherd, bless your church with faithful under-shepherds. Pastors who proclaim your death and resurrection as they minister to the souls in their care. Give all ministers of the gospel an unwavering devotion to your word. Loving shepherd, we pray also for other sheep. Let your voice be heard in the world. Prosper the work of our missionaries in, at home and abroad. Give us all the zeal and courage to share with our friends and neighbors the good news of sins forgiven. Use our witness to gather the elect into one fold under your care. Gracious Good Shepherd, we ask you to enfold in your arms Dr. Race and Rita Myers, as this past week they lost their business to an electrical fire. Be with them during this time of difficulty, guiding them in the paths that you would have them walk, comforting them with your rod and your staff, reminding them that you will never leave them nor forsake them, giving them the joy and hope of the, the greatest treasure you have given them and all of us in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Be with them and help them as they sort through the next weeks and months of their lives to figure out what to do next. We ask you to continue to hold them in your tender care. An eternal shepherd, when our days on earth come to an end and we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, lead us safely to our eternal home. There will we enjoy your goodness and mercy forever. Amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our next hymn, Jerusalem the Golden. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Risen and ascended Lord, you are the good shepherd. You lay down your life for the sheep. They are yours. Empower your church to reach every sheep of yours and to give witness until you have brought all your sheep into one fold. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Once again, a blessed good morning to all of you. Special welcome to those who are visiting with us this morning. Also, a special welcome to those who are joining us online. We ask that you, if you are joining us online or even later today, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like or share button on Facebook or on YouTube, that would be appreciated so that God's word can get out to more people. I don't have any other announcements other than what are in the bulletin. Mrs. Rosenbaum? Hi, just very quickly, um, for those of you ladies who didn't miss it, yesterday was the circuit's LWMS rally. Yeah, I know. I actually happened to remember, so I did watch it. It is on YouTube, so if you would like to go and see, watch the presentation, that would be great. Um, if you can't find it, I do have the link, so you could contact me for the link for it. The speaker was Vicar David Choi. He is currently serving down at Reformation. I'm going to have to bend this because my calves are killing me. <laughs> so, no, it's okay. So, um, he is from China. He grew up in China, had a job in China. He is a Korean Chinese. And he went to Korea, visited there. I'm telling you his whole story. But suffice it to say, he's a second career pastor. Um, went through the Bethany program. Bethany is our ELS um, seminary. Hey, the motorcycle's gone. I can talk again. Um, and so he's serving his vicarship down at Reformation right now. So very interesting presentation. Pastor Duquesne down in Ascension um, Escondido had a wonderful opening and closing devotion for us. They also mentioned that um, elections are there. There's a link for that too, to vote for officers. And speaking of elections, I have in my hand ballots for our national board. The convention is going to be virtual again this year, so anybody can part, the national convention is going to be virtual, so anybody can participate with that. I do have two sets of who the people we're voting for are, so that you can read a little bit in the projects. The vote does not have to be sent until I think it's May 25th, so I'm going to have these around for a while. Obviously, I'm going to be at the piano right now, but you can come up and get them. But I'll have them with me the next couple of weeks so that we can all vote. I have, I know quite often you guys will say, who do you recommend? I know none of them this time, so I can't recommend anybody. So your guess or vote is as good as mine. So thank you. Thank you, and uh, have a blessed day.